Hey guys, it's Brian and Max from Up at Noon, and today we're joined with Dimitri Martin. Thank you so much for coming by, seriously. Uh, your new movie, Dean, is out June 2nd, yeah. uh, and I'm gonna cut right to it. It made both of yeah. us cry. Oh, it's, wow, really? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, that's, um, is, that's good. Yeah. It's supposed <laughs> to do that. It's, so this is, this it's got is a heartfelt thing. Obviously too. a very, very personal movie. You, you wrote, directed, and starred in this, yeah. and I'm guessing it's rooted in some personal experiences? Yeah, yeah, I put it all on the table for this. Um, it's all fiction, but so in the movie, my character and Kevin Klein plays my dad, which I was very grateful to get Kevin. He kind of made it happen, you know, because he's like gave it legitimacy. It became like a real movie when he signed up. But the two characters are grieving the loss of um, my character's mom, who's passed away about a year maybe before the movie takes place. So it's a comedy, but it is heartfelt. Was it difficult to make something so much more personal, or is that something that's easier to do? I found it challenging. I'm, I looked up and I'm suddenly 20 years into stand-up and for most of that I'm just writing jokes. I like one-liners and doing jokes about objects, things, you know, simple stuff. Um, and it's fun because they're kind of like games. Like if I, if I get a joke to work, I feel like I cracked it or right. I solved a puzzle yeah. or something. Um, and it's not that they're personal in as much as it's what I really think about, but they're not autobiographicals all the time. Some of them are, but it's not like I'm telling my life story. And, and you know, you guys know that era we live in now is um, it's very autobiographical, especially in comedy. People, it's almost like an autobiography diarrhea right now that's happening right. people. I think some people are great at it. Others, I'm not as interested. You know, it's like anything. You've, you've got a, a huge background in writing and you've done tons of stand-up, but uh, how, was it, how was it directing something you wrote Starring yourself, like what? Did yeah, that was of, that was tricky. Together, that was tricky. Yeah, that yeah. was hard. I, I knew it would be pretty challenging. I wanted to do it because um, there's, you know, you can save yourself. You can protect yourself in a lot of ways. It's hard, and you're definitely playing with fire if you do that. But, you know, I get to control the edit, so I can edit my movie, which is great. And um, in performing, you can almost edit while you're going a little bit, or at least feel what's happening, change your writing, you get to be in the scenes with the other actors. So that was really cool. And the directing part of it I hadn't done before, but I really liked, it turned out I liked doing that because you, I think a lot of us are so savvy. I mean, even someone like me, I'm in my 40s, so I'm not that young, but I've grown up with so many different kinds of media and it's certainly right. just proliferated. We've seen so much footage, so much content. I think there's, there's, you know more than you realize in a sense. You just kind of, there's a language, there's a visual storytelling language that's there. Our audience loves movies and video games and action figures and there are so many forms of media that you just sort of take and you consume yeah. and I don't think a, 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 enough of them really know like the the sort of cathartic thrill that it is to make something to actually yeah. create something so what like how, how does someone get started doing that what is what are the, what, are, what pushes that to happen so I've found over the years that focusing on the process of making things in my notebooks um, it's really enjoyable and it's portable and self-contained and I'm not that familiar with where games are these days like I've I've just fallen behind on all of it it's just like it's hard to keep up with music with everything it's just like I feel like I'm a couple steps behind but the notebooks have persisted for me and in them I find kind of my own generative games my own kind of self-oriented games where whether I'm writing jokes or writing palindromes or just like weird line drawings or trying to come up with drawings that don't require words that can work as jokes. Some of which I put in the movie, you know, where it's just like they're almost like a silent film or a snapshot. Like those are great because I feel like they're identifiable endpoints that you can aim for and then you try to achieve something. And to me that feels like gaming or that feels like playing something. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's kind of really nice helping. too, like you get on an airplane and it's like, oh, it's 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 loud, but right. it's also quiet, right. and I don't have Wi-Fi, and right. no one can call me, and right. I can't get texts. Well, you and do, I, but it's like 12 bucks. Yeah, oh yeah. Right, um, exactly. It's like, that's hey, like a- $48 <laughs> for 40 minutes. Oh, that's not greedy yeah. at all, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. So like, I think it's good to have those sort of like safe havens, those quiet places. Yeah. The phone that doesn't you know, have Wi-Fi, the typewriter that doesn't connect to the internet and have 70 apps on it. I think it's nice, you know, it's like, it certainly balance is something that I strive for, and. I don't know. Again, I'm not a big gamer, but I can imagine mm -hmm. that it works best when you feel like you have a life in addition to it and you're not like completely f***ing off the planet <laughs> and just pulled in. You know, I'm sure that's fun to just disappear, but 
you look up and you're like, you lost a foot. You're like, what the, f what? Yeah. <laughs> and then, got gangrene. <laughs> yeah, exa exa that's exactly what, you know, what, what I was thinking is just, it's so important to just stop every now and then and just sort of create. It's something. interesting. And I think in today's world, all the content that we have at our disposal to consume, it's definitely overwhelming. You have to curate your own experience. Yeah. Right. And for gaming too, like you've got to like, you have to put effort into that. If you're too passive, I feel like someone's just controlling your fate, your, your state of mind in a lot of ways, I feel like what you pay attention to just has so much of an effect on what reality is to you. So when you're on the other side of it and you try to make some content, I don't know, I'm trying to be mindful of the audience because more than ever before in history, people can just turn off, turn on, change, click, do whatever the hell they want anywhere on their phone, on an airplane. So it's like, um, I don't know, it just feels like a responsibility to just try harder, make something that might be worth someone's time because it just seems so precious, someone's attention. That is fantastic to hear. <laughs> that was really good. It's true though. You know? It was beautiful. Yeah. Um, Dimitri Martin, thank you so much for coming by to Thanks. IGN. Um, your new movie is called Dean. It's out June 2nd. Yeah. Uh, and everyone should go see it. Uh, is it going to be everywhere, limited run release? Like um, The first weekend, I think it's in like 12 cities and then they slowly roll it out depending on how well it does. It'll be, it'll be around the whole country though. So probably not for very long. It's a small movie, but... Yeah, I hope you see it. Go see it. Cool. If you enjoyed our interview with Dimitri Martin, check out some of our other ones, like the time we talked to Dak Shepard and Michael Pena, the cast of Chips, or the famous Alan Tudyk, better known as K2SO from Rogue One. And for more Up at Noon, check out every Thursday at noon Pacific time on IGN.